Mr. Narashiman, Novartis had a somewhat subdued start to 2021, with sales and profits lower compared to previous year. To what extent is the result affected by the ongoing pandemic? You know, overall, we're very pleased with how resilient Novartis has been able to navigate the recent quarters, including uh, quarter one. What's very important to note when looking at our quarter one results is the impact of forward purchasing in the prior year, where we had $400 million in quarter one of last year. When you make that comparison, of course, it looks uh, like, a, as you say, a subdued result. When you account for that, Novartis actually demonstrated an innovative medicines, 3% uh, sales growth, uh, 1% overall sales growth in US dollars. So I think it shows that the business is now coming back as healthcare systems return to normal. We maintain our full year guidance and we're optimistic now for the remainder of uh, 2021. And uh, do you expect the catch-up effect uh, after the end of the pandemic? We expect as healthcare systems return to normal, diagnosis uh, rates should increase, thera therapeutic rates will increase. And over the course of this year, we expect many of our many uh, key medicines to accelerate, particularly uh, critical medicines like Entresto, as well as our launch brands like Zolgensma and Casimta. So we think there will be, as healthcare systems return to normal and acceleration. The one area where we uh, expect stabilization would be in our Sandoz Generics unit, where we did see some disruptions due to COVID-19 and, and a very diminished cough and cold season in the first quarter. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, Sandoz San, Sando Generics business suffered uh, with a sales decline of 9%. If the business continues to put pressure on the group, are you thinking about selling the division? There's no change in our commitment to Sandoz. I think what's important to note is this is a short-term effect driven by the pandemic and the pandemic's impact on hospitals, lower demand in hospitals leading to pricing pressure in the system, as well as a record low cough and cold season because social mobility was so limited as people largely stayed at home. As these things normalize, we expect Sandoz over the medium term to get back to very solid growth. Our target is a mid single digit growth in this business with very attractive profitability. And our focus is really to set Sandoz up for success in that medium term. On the other hand, the division Innovative Medicine developed quite strongly in the first quarter. What will be the main drivers for the future for this division? We're very excited by the outlook for innovative medicines. I think this quarter demonstrated the power of our innovation platform and our ability to launch new medicines. On the one hand, our ongoing growth drivers like Cosentix and Entresto showed very strong double-digit growth. And then our recent launches in advanced therapies like Zolgensma, Kimraya, Lutathera also performed well. And our new launch medicines such as Casimta also beat external expectations. So I think with these platforms, we now have the opportunity to really deliver medium term strong growth over the coming years. And that should ultimately enable us to continue to invest in our pipeline where we have one of the deepest pipelines in the industry. And one last question. Can you give us a short update on the initiatives of Novartis in the fight against coronavirus? Novartis is committed to doing its part to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. First, with our Sandoz unit, we continue to provide dexamethasone and other critical medicines at cost to low and low and middle income countries around the world. And we continue to be a leading participant in the Gates CEO roundtable to tackle the problem of access to low and middle income countries. Second, with our manufacturing network, we're supporting a range of different products, including BioNTech Pfizer here in our uh, facility in Stein in Switzerland. In Austria, we're supporting the production of CureVax mRNA vaccine. And in Singapore, we're supporting the production of an antibody therapeutic. And lastly, we continue our R&D efforts to find novel therapies to treat COVID-19. This includes in our research lab, we work to develop a pan-coronavirus oral small molecule drug, as well as our partnership with Swiss-based molecular partners to develop a therapeutic for symptomatic and pre-symptomatic COVID-19. So we'll continue to advance all of those efforts as we support the global fight of, that our industry, I think, is really leading to bring this pandemic to a close.